We'll be with that chip that is going to be both from Mongo and Mongo and also act as a host. We'll be later on. So, start off, want to do some recon and see what's out there. I have brought some wonderful goodies for us to uh, hack, and I give you all permission to hack them, but please wait until we get to that point so that everybody gets the, the, uh, the real experience. I don't want to get to one of these and uh, someone's already broke it. So, yeah, give us a chance. You know, we'll get to it together. Thank you. Well, All right, so the first thing I want you to do is, in your Kali Linux, or if you're running good version of Linux, uh, these so commands generally work. There's three so ways to put your card into monitor mode. Uh, the first one, probably most common if you find it on YouTube, is using uh, Aircrack, Airmon NG. I'm going to actually do um, some of these right now, so can't read that small print, that's fine. And they're also the slides that you uh, could have downloaded. Um, second method is using the IW command, uh, IW config command, that is being deprecated. And so now they have an IW method, which is just a different command. So let's do that first. All right. So we're using IW command to see what's available. And here I have three wireless cards. WLAN 0 is the card in the laptop, so we're not getting that one. Um, I want to use these TP link cards. WLAN 2 and 3 are both TP link cards uh, able to support both monitor and host monitor. So let's first uh, put WLAN 2 into monitor mode. We're going to use the, uh, I prefer the IW. Uh, command just because that's the, the newest it's kind of manual where you can see what aircraft is doing. But uh, let's start with the aircraft method in airmon. So running the airmon command, airmon ng, start the VLAN 2, real easy. What this does is it creates a wireless interface. And yeah, there you go. VLAN 2 mon. And uh, it didn't work because it's still in manage mode. I don't know. That's right. We're going to do it in a different way that is more successful anyway. Let's stop that. Yeah, no, that's okay. Um, so I'm going to use config, but before we can run this, we have to take interface down. So I have config, WLAN, and we'll do three since. You got messed up there. We're going to take it down. So I'm going to three down. In order to change it from managed mode to monitor mode, it, the interface has to be brought down first. So now we're going to do IW config WLAN 3 set uh, mode. Oh, just mode, sorry. These are two commands mixed up. Mode monitor. And do I config WLAN? Three up. So now we're in a modern mode right here. When we're in modern mode, now we can listen to what's going on around us. This is where it gets kind of fun. We'll start off just to kind of give an example. Air dump, WLAN 3. And we're going to just hop through all the channels and we'll see what's popping up. So this first thing you see here, these are all the access points that are available. And so you see all mine up here, and you see the WSU ones and the St. Con ones and the badge ones. Um, if we hit the A key, we can scroll through, see some of the clients. Now, this is fun. This is, uh, this is where we get to find out what access points you guys have been connected to. Someone's connected to Wolverine, something, Free Yard. CD badge and badges, AWG Wi Fi. So, what your wireless devices do is it actually tells the world hey, these are the access points that the wireless connect networks that I've connected to. Are you out there? And uh, different uh, people take advantage of that. One of the ways they take advantage of that is to track you. If you go into a store that is taking advantage of this, they'll track where you're at in the store. Um, and uh, just to be able to gather more information about you, 
what your habits are when you're in their store and uh, possibly provide different um, uh, advertising in the future to you or, or whatever. We'll take advantage of this again a little bit later, but I just wanted to show you that. So in modern mode, we now can do that. So I want you guys to do that, get in modern mode, see what's going on around, the, uh, around here. Does anybody need a Wi-Fi card? Like I said, I have three Wi-Fi cards available if someone needs it. Yeah, come on up. Grab it. Yes. One more, anybody else? Awesome. Okay. So the monitor command or the arrow jump command. So this is the command I would do to view the networks around us. And once I've taken down the interface, Using an uh, if command, I can then do the IW command to change it to modern mode, bring the interface back up, and then we can run the uh, arrow mod to uh, see what's going on around us. Oh, sorry, arrow go. Is that what you want to see with the arrow down? Okay. And then if you hit the A key, it'll change between showing the access points and the clients, or just the access points, or just the clients. <coughs> or stations. Okay. Everybody with me there? Any questions? Awesome, we're definitely much farther ahead than, than I had planned, which is way good. Okay. Questions? No? Okay. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is uh, talk about WPS. Oops, wow. We're going to start cracking. Uh, before we do, if anybody is using web, he's going to use it now. You're gone. If you are. Okay. All right. So, using WPS, WPS stands for Wi Fi Protected Setup, and it's super protected. You're, you're way safe with WPS. Way, way safe. Okay, so we're going to play the tool Reaver. Reaver has been recently recompiled for Cali. Um, started at the end of 1.1. They put in w, uh, Pixie WPS, and so it actually does both together. It's really cool. Um, but uh, what this is, is WPS has a vulnerability in that the pin code can be guessed. WPS has a different vulnerability called the Pixie Dust, Pixie Dust Attack, where it can be guessed even faster. Okay? Um, in order to find out what networks are vulnerable to these, we use a tool called WASH. On Android phone, there's another tool I use, uh, Wiggle Wi-Fi. Looks kind of like this. And you're looking for anything that says WPS. Okay, now every single access point that says WPS isn't necessarily vulnerable to either of these attacks. You have high probability of being able to break in using WPS. Uh, on any access point that has WPS enabled. So let's play with it. All right. So, wash is the command we're going to use to see what access points around us are vulnerable to a WPS or a PC dust, dust attack. So, wash, I'm going to do a capital C because I get a lot of error messages based on my stuff. You may need to do that as well. But, but. Okay, so we're using. Our WLAN 3, and now we're seeing these access points that are WPS enabled. Someone's got a Verizon card uh, hotspot that's vulnerable, just FYI. 
Hanno il cerchio, non c'è nulla, ma è una Ecco. Ok, quindi la gas va. So again, that's the wash command is part of the reaper package. And it's uh, in slides, and maybe it's small print as well. Okay, using the information we gathered using wash or read Wi Fi or just what we already know, we want to get the BSSID, this wonderful bunch of numbers together, looks like an address, because it is. Um, so we're going to use that information to break in. Now, all of these up here that are showing up are the ones I brought, except for this one right here. I don't know who that is. Just saying. Uh, we're going to, we're going to, right now, hopefully I'll be able to do it up here unless you guys block me. We're going to break into this Belkin.930 using a pixie dust attack. So I went to the thrift store. Like yesterday, and I picked up lunch and I found this one with one, so sweet. Alright, so we're going to use Reaper. We've got to tell the interface, then we set it WLAN 3 in the modern mode, so we're going to use WLAN 3. We tell it the BSSID using the dash B, and we give it the uh, MAC address here. Um, to do the pixie depth part of this, we add a couple of things. We're going to do a dash BBB. I like to see the output. Um, a dash capital K. And we're just going to do one. There's actually four different levels we can do. We're just going to do number one. And hopefully, if it's not getting blocked, we'll get it in. So you notice it's jumping through the channels. Let's uh, stop that. We're going to add a dash C10 so that it only attacks channel 10. And uh, here we go, break in. Throw pixie dust, now we're switching to just regular reaver, and we've got it. Boom. In a few seconds, we now have the uh, WPA, the WPS pin for this wireless network. You try it, go for it. The other one that's vulnerable to this attack, we're going to wash up here again. So there's two up here that are, uh, the other one that is vulnerable is going to pop up here in a sec. Because if we all cracked the same one, it would uh, probably get reboot. But the, uh, the other one that's vulnerable is this one right here. It's also vulnerable to the pixie dust attack. Okay. Any questions on the pixie dust attack before you move on to regular reason? Hey, you guys the uh, regular reaver command, it just attacks the WPS. So it does the pin popping, it attacks all the pins that are available. Um, it's basically the same way we just take off this other stuff. If we just take off the dash K1, that's all we need. And now it's going to do a regular reader attack, and it could take it could take hours. Um, I don't know how long this one takes. There's an access point called Coil, lowercase Coil. It takes about six hours to crack it. Still works. Just takes six hours. So you see a lot of this, and so you run into a problem. You know, how can I speed that up? Well, there's two things that really help speed up. Breaking, uh, well, there's three, I guess. Breaking WPS, there's three main things. One is signal strength. And uh, in order to boost our signal strength, we do what? We, uh, we get a bigger Wi Fi card, it's like a two watt card. We can jump to a patch panel. Now, this panel is semi directional, anything that's in front of it. It's going to start picking up, but it also boosts the signal. I think this one's a 16 dB uh, antenna. It's great for uh, a little more inconspicuous than when you move to the Gaggy antenna. You know, you, you drive up with this, and people kind of, you know, a little suspicious. You know, uh, the, 
the cool thing about this setup here is right here I actually have a 2 watt booster. So you put the 2 watt card in here, 2 watt booster, now you're up to 4 watts, you can really reach out and touch someone, that, right? Um, you, you still run into the problem that the other side doesn't have that same power. So you may be able to see it, you can talk to them, but your signal coming back from them may not be as great. So the next thing you want to do is get closer to them, right? So you pick up your computer and you walk close to them, get in your car and walk close to them. Um, I ran into a problem where I had a client who wanted me to break in to their network. They wanted to do a network penetration test, but they didn't want me to do a physical break in. They're like, oh yeah, we know how to break in physically, we don't want you to do that. But they had a big fence, okay, and I needed to get closer. So they, they didn't let me get to the fence. So I had to come up with some other ideas on how to do that. Uh, this first one is a good RC car. Okay, get the RC car. This, I actually strapped this on here, and it, people, it, that doesn't look good. You know, <laughs> having a, a suitcase, a black suitcase, on a little RC car driving it, yeah, people get upset about that. Um, but uh, all I have in here is just a Raspberry Pi hooked up to a battery pack, and so ultimately I just took all this out and strapped it onto the RC car. And I'll be able to drive it through their main get gate fence. It had a gap underneath. I'll be able to drive them right if they're close enough. And I used the Raspberry Pi as my hopping point. The other cool thing about the Raspberry Pi is I could kick off this reaver that would take a long time, hours. You know, and I could go get a get an ice cream, whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. And then come back later and check on it. And it was still cracking away, and then we came back the next day and boom, it popped. So um, Sometimes getting closer, you gotta get creative. Um, the the next one that I've been working on because I, I didn't have a way under the fence and I couldn't break in uh, as well. I don't know why people like me physically break in. It doesn't make sense. So the next thing I did was uh, uh, put together a quadcopter, and uh, this quadcopter. The cool thing about this one is that it has GPS. And I can program it uh, where to, to go in and land. So you program it to go and land on the roof. And on the bottom here, we have a Reaver Pro. And uh, so it does the same thing with Raspberry Pi, just instead of breaks and cracks it away. Um, I have it hooked up to the main battery of this uh, quadcopter so that if the battery gets low, it just takes off and comes and lands where I had uh, originally set it up to uh, land at. So this is kind of a prototype, uh, proof of concept. I haven't actually used this on a client yet, but uh, you know, sometimes getting closer, like I said, you have to get creative. So there is that. Um, the, uh, the last thing I had was um, getting creative, and I stripped this out to give out those Wi-Fi cards. But uh, this is another tool that I've used. It's a uh, it's a pretty good box, so you can just click it on the wall and plug it in the wall and walk away. And uh, then it gives you another hopping point as well. Now the cool thing is, you know, these are my clients, and so when I want to retrieve my gear, I can go back and get it, right? If uh, if you were a bad guy, then you know, it might be a little different. You may just ditch it. But you know, be aware of those things. When you see these things around, you know, it could be something mischievous going on. Okay, so get closer, boost your signal, two ways to, uh, to help increase your likelihood. Yeah, please. Yeah, I can, I can tell you right now. It's going to take six hours to break, so I'm not going to break this one. Um, I'm going to get back to that. So, um, let's see. Is that, is that yeah. Okay, awesome. So that's Reaver, which is WPS attack. That's Pixie Dust, which is another WPS attack, but only specific uh, access points or implementations of WPS are vulnerable to the Pixie Dust attack. Um, 
The next thing we're going to do is more of a brute force. Okay? I'll, I'll go back. Did you get all that? You want to go off of that? Okay, off. Um, oh, yeah, I forgot about NDK3. So, boost the power, get closer. Sometimes with the WPS attack, you get a lockout. And this is the third way to help increase your likelihood. Because you want to get that router or wireless attack point to reboot. And so there's two tools I use to do a demonstrative attack on a wireless access point. One of them is AirPlay, which is part of the AirCrack NG package. And the other one is NDK3. All right, so let's uh, show that real quick. So if I were going to do a AirCrack, sorry, a AirPlay, or no, we're going to do NDK3. Okay, so let's say we're cracking away, you know, with this one, and it's just it's just not getting anywhere. We're just it gets to the same pin, it just kind of gets stuck. Okay. Well, I'm just progressing. We want to get that access point to reboot. So what we're going to do is in another window, we're going to try and reboot that one. And this is where. Your participation will help because if we all did it, it would be like dead. It would be awesome. All right. So we're going to jump over here, make sure we have another interface that we can use. And we're going to try to use that WLAN 2 mod that kind of got messed up. Uh, so let's take it down. WLAN 2 mod. WLAN 2 mod. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is using NDK3, we're going to try and get that other access point to reboot. So, we do NDK3 dash. Got to WLAN 2 on uh, A dash A. So we're doing, there's two attacks that I like. This one is, or this one has one. So the dash A is the authentication DOS attack. The other one that I like to do, I think, is the dash M. Yeah, Microsoft M. Yeah, okay. So we'll start with the uh, yeah, authentication DOS attack. So interface that we land to, mon2, mon a dash a, and then we tell it the uh, access point. I think we copied it. Yes, good. And we do a dash m. All right, so now we're just going to attempt to, you know, so I want to do that attack. See if it's had no success over here. So we're going to switch it. So what it's doing is indicator is is trying to be a thousand clients sending authentication requests. Now it's getting fifteen hundred clients trying to authenticate to this access point, trying to get it to crawl to its knees and wait for more things. Um, we'll try to do the attack. So using indicator three. Change so dash so n dash t. And so this is the micro shutdown attack. And if other people can do it at the same time, we'll have more success. <coughs>
Yeah. Yeah, the other thing you can do is go shut off your power and that works. Okay. Uh, anyway, get the idea there. Non service tag on an access point. Sometimes you can get it to reboot, sometimes you can get it to go out of the lockout state. Um, when you're running wash, you'll notice a column that says no test lockout. And uh, some of the newer things that people have done, uh, some of the vendors have done to try and keep us from breaking in, is they've implemented new things. And one of the things is no test lockout. And so it, it sees too many attempts. And everybody's implemented it a little bit differently. So I can't say exactly how it is, but uh, if it sees too many WPS attempts, it ends up blocking WPS. Usually, with the reboot, that goes away. Sometimes it doesn't. But uh, just be aware of that. If you're breaking into your network and you know the WPS lockout, that's a good thing. It'd be better if you don't even have WPS. Um, so that is. Okay, let's see where we're at. Any questions on the denial service? Oh, I was going to show one more. So the other denial service tech that I do on Access Point is we do the Air Crack NG package. Um, I'm going to bring this slide back for a sec. Sorry about that. The uh, Air Crack NG has a tool called Airplay NG, and it can also do a de authentication attack. Okay, so airplay ng dash zero zero, which is continuous, dash a for authentication. That's awesome. That's that's everybody win three. So now oh yeah, we have to go to right channel. Okay, so it's on the channel that on. Let's see. Yeah, so there's two ways to change the channel or the interface. Some tools require you to have that channel changed before you can use it. Other times it'll try and change it for you. So we're going to use the IW command, change the channel. So IW, and you can tell the device, W3, set channel, and we're cracking on channel 2. Now we should be able to use the tool. And what this is doing is going to be off the tax at that access point, trying to get it to reboot. Or just to de authenticate the user that are on it. This particular attack we're going to use again in just a sec. But, so just want to bring that up. Okay. Moving back to our slides. Alright, the next attack we're going to do is the dictionary attack. Group four. Okay. Has anybody used aircraft NG in the past to brute force into a wireless network? That feels like awesome. You guys are probably like on board here. This guy got covered this stuff already. Um, this this is just like it said. We're gonna do a dictionary attack and throw the book at it, right? Okay. Um, brute force is way slow. This is gonna take even longer than the six hour WPS attack, even longer than the 12 hour WPS attack, but sometimes they were smart, they turned off the OPS, they still want to try and get in. Um, sorry for the small writing, uh, you should have the ability to get on the fly. Uh, but we're going to do most of this anyway, so you can see it up here. Down at the bottom, there's three different ways of doing a word list attack. We're actually going to just use the. Uh, we may have time to use more than one. We may go use more than one. We're just going to start off with a regular word list using the CPU. Um, John Ripper is great because you can use it to generate the word list on the fly. So it's brute force, straight up from scratch. Uh, Aircraft just using it by itself is going to require a word list. And then there's some cool stuff because of the GPU, right? We can take advantage of the GPU that is Pirate, which is a really cool tool. 
The problem is right now it's still requiring the uh, order this. But there's other options. You know, there's always more than one way to do something. And this is just one that we're going to show here. All right, moving, uh, moving on back to our terminal. Okay, so we're going to attack. Over there we have two clients connecting to our wireless access point. And we're going to de-authenticate them to try and capture that handshake. And then we're going to do an offline, meaning we're no longer even have to be close to that, doing an offline attack on that handshake. Okay? So first, let's find it. Arrow down. Okay, I know it's the uh, which network it is, which makes it easy for it. Not problem for Let's turn it right again. Yeah, right here. So this is the network that we're going to attack. The DDWRT network. Um, so this is it. Okay, so we know that it's on channel six. So we're going to use the arrow dump ng command, setting it to channel so that it doesn't hop around. And we're going to switch over to stations. I'm sure it's popping up. Okay. okay. Awesome. So we have some people to attack. The, uh, the key here is to capture that handshake. So we're going to set up our, our capturing uh, inviting to a file. So we're going to send the deauth to the client, get them to deauthenticate, reauthenticate, so we can capture that handshake. We're going to take that file and use uh, a word list to try and break it. Okay. So first, let's get our listening on. And, uh, on the slides, we're. Uh, just starting out. Um, over here. Okay. So, arrow down. NG dash I W three dash dash D S S I D. Remember, we want. We got it. 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 On channel six, we want to write it. We just call it MPA crack, and we actually put the interface on here. And that's okay. Because of the other tools. Okay. So using this window, we're going to try and capture the client. And I grabbed the wrong one. We should have seen two clients. Let's try and grab that and make sure we grab the right there it is. Yep, wrong. wrong network we're trying to grab there. Okay. Yep, there we go. We have two clients that are nice and happy connecting to this access point. We're going to jump onto another window. Get like this. Um, so we have one card that's listening and capturing. And now we're going to use another card. You can use it with a neighbor or a friend. You can use another access or another wireless card. To do the denial of service or the DOF attack. Okay? So remember we have our second interface that we WN2 mom, and we're going to do airplay G dash WN2 mom dash AA dash Oh, that's right. So the, uh, there's another way of doing it, that's that DOF. I'm sure that as well. And then you tell it how many you want it to send. Uh, dash A to access point, paste, and then the interface. One, two, one. Okay, so now we're going to do the, the, the authentication attack. Jump back over here. Oh, we're on the wrong channel. Again, I forgot to change the channel. W, dev, W, N. Okay, there we go. There we go. Now we're seeing some stuff. And boom, we have a handshake. We can shut everything down. We can go back home, go to the coffee shop, whatever, and uh, do our 
offline attack. Okay, so the offline attack being one of the rootless, for the first one we're going to do, the other way is to use a brute force and jump rope. So first we'll do the word list. Uh, so how long, see who knows, what is the shortest length of WPA, WPA2 pass rates going to be? Eight. Eight, yes. So that's, you know, don't waste your time with anything shorter than eight for WPA, WPA2. So you can cut down your word list size a little bit. Um, I think it's pretty huge after, after eight. So, We Two instances up here, one and two. We're going to try just the first one. We're going to use a cap file. And then you tell the word list. Now, I created a word list, so obviously I have it in there. But you, I, I can guarantee your word list will probably have this one in Oh, I didn't find it in our first handshake. So let's try it in our second caption. And boom, key found would be the one password. It's one of the top 25. You know, you can build those. Okay, so now that we know we can capture using dictionary files, try capturing using John Ripper, and let's see how long that will take. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit longer of a command because we're taking John Ripper, we're going to pipe it standard out, we're going to take aircraft, we're going to pipe the Windows into the standard out. Okay? So for that. All right. So again, as you can see it, this is the basic word list attack. Now we do John dash incremental session. You can call if you call it a session, you can actually come back to it later. This is very handy if you have your laptop or your computer up for just a short period of time, then you want to get back to it and start where you left off. So we're going to just back that extended out. If we did that right here, we could get So in uh, Caddy 1.0 or 1.1, you can do this uh, command that I have in the slide uh, right here to do a incremental oh, back. Uh, for John Grimper, I'll have to uh, update the slide and give it to the same kind of people to uh, post it. So I apologize, I'll get that fixed. Um, okay, um, but let me show you what that command would look like. So that you can see it. So it would be John from mental equals all. You can tell it what kind of uh, characters you want to use. And then you do a session so you can come back to it. And then you say send it out. Python, aircraft. G, 
A two dash B get the same access point file be captured and then we do a dash W and instead of doing a word list we do a dash dash that tells aircraft to look at standard out and use it as standard in. Okay, so if uh, if John's working, then we can be back in way. All that stuff. All right, we'll move on. Okay, so brute forcing is way slow. Uh, there's always more than one way to skin a cat, right? So we talked about WPA with pixie dust or WPS pixie dust. Brute force. The next way is to play people twin. Okay. Now I may not be trying to get them to, you know, to imitate their network because I don't know their their passphrase, right? But if we look at um, using Aerodump and we go to clients. We get some people to start popping up. Oh yeah, here we go. So these are networks that these clients have associated with in the past that they're comfortable with uh, connecting to. So, oh, that's a good one. Let's do that. Okay. <laughs> so now we're going to do the evil twin attack. Um, to do this, we, again, depending on if you're using Kali 1.1, Kali 2.0, uh, we'll set up a bridge differently. And the reason I like to set up a bridge is because I want them to get the same IP address that they would normally get. If I was wired into a network, I want them to get the same IP address as if they were wired into the network. And so I like to use a bridge just to pass out. The other way to do this, you can set up the HTTP server and you actually hand them an IP address when they connect to you. Um, so and we're going to use a bridge because that's what I like. We're going to use host APD. We're going to create this config file so we can just run it on the command line. And we're going to see if it gets the people to uh, connect with our people twin. Okay. So we got here. We want to create a file called hostapd.conf, and we're going to just put some stuff into it, which is just like on the slide here. Um, and I'm just going to copy and paste it. Is a little bit faster. Okay, I'm going to change this to three. So we're going to create one called the Sales Access. And we'll put the channel, I think, 11. Okay. The G is 11. The BR0 is 5. Okay. So Kelly 2.0 to create a bridge device. So we are going to have a hard time here because I have, I would need a wired network. I actually have a big one right here too. So we're going to bridge the wireless network to the wired network and hit and set up a, this evil twin access point. Okay. Make sure we got something on UTF0. No, nothing. That's right. We're going to take that out. So I have config, ETH0 down. We want to take it down. We want to change it because we're going to set up the bridge device. So the reason Cali 1.1 has a different way, the uh, bridge utils is deprecated. And so at 2.0, it's not available. So we use the IP command. So IP link. And just like with your uh, wireless, you really want to make sure you have your Network manager stop because it can get overwhelmed. All right, so IP link add VR zero. We're going to create a type bridge. IP link set the ETH zero down. IP address. We want to make sure we don't have any historical addresses that we can't pick up. We want to pick it up on the bridge device. So we flush. Okay, zero. Oops, bad. Now we want to kind of bring that interface up and assign it to that bridge. 
Happy link, set, dev, ETH, zero, up. Happy link, set, dev, ETH, zero, master, ER, zero. Happy link, set, ER, zero, up. And ETH client, zero, zero, and get my address. I have it connected to this side. There we go. So if uh, you have your stuff set up, go ahead and play around with these access points while I do this real quick. You know, there's always got to be something that goes wrong, right? Not a, it's not a live demo uh, if there's not something that goes wrong. So 
There we go. We have an evil twin. Now we can do evil things to the traffic that passes through it because it's actually passing through our computer. Awesome. Okay, let's see what else we got. Yeah. So then um, I'm going to wrap up here and we'll do some questions. You guys can keep playing with these access points and hack them as, as we wrap up. What can we do about this? Well, you can always, you know, it's just like anything in security, it's about layers. Encrypt layers, encrypt the traffic at the, at the wireless, encrypt the traffic that's going over the wireless, encrypt the data that's passing over the wireless, and just do layers upon layers. Use strong encryption, change the passphrase off, pass often. How many in here, and you don't have to raise your hand, it's okay. How many in here are using the exact same passphrase for your wireless network that you used last year? Yeah, okay. How many of you have handed that passphrase out to a friend or a neighbor who maybe doesn't live nearby anymore? Okay, every time someone downloads and installs an app, that ask for permission about the wireless, they potentially could get that wireless setting from anybody you've given it to. So change that often. A friend of mine says that passwords are like underwear. The longer the better, because we want to be modest, and change them often. Okay. Do your research before you buy wireless access points. Find out if it has WPS, if there are no vulnerabilities for that access point. Update the firmware. Those firmwares that they ship with, they just want to get them out the door, and then they worry about fixing the, the bugs later. Encrypt everything. Beware of physical things, like my quadcopter and RC car. If you see those things, you know, probably stop it. <laughs> um, audit your systems. Be aware of what you have and what vulnerabilities your systems have, so that you can take actions to Correct it, mitigate the risk, lessen it. Okay, awesome. Any questions? Please. So the question was Do these attacks work on a corporate network? Yes, they actually do. The, uh, the DOP attacks, which is the offline uh, dictionary attacks, that works on every wireless network that has WPA and WPA2, you can de off them, grab the handshake, take it home to the dictionary attack. Uh, the WPA or the WPS attacks, they've been pretty good at not enabling WPS on some of the uh, systems, but a lot of companies that I do have done audits for, they're actually using ON stuff. Or in a corporate environment, environment someone has brought in their own personal wireless access point plugged in the network because they didn't want to have to go through all the process to get connected to the other network. So that's still another entry point into your environment. So like I said, there's more than one way to stay cat. There's going to be more than one way to get onto your network if they can't break through the wireless. But you know, the best thing to do is just, just to audit it to find out if your particular network is vulnerable to the cat. Thank you for the question. Anything Yeah, it does work on both. You're right. I did stay with 2.4 years just because it was uh, in the community that I had to work with. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah, so there's just some settings that you do a little bit differently than you do uh, the N5 gigahertz range. But they are vulnerable as well. You can still do the Yum Tag, you can still do the WPS Tag if that router is WPS enabled. Awesome guys. Anything else? Any other questions? I appreciate oh yeah, please. So what was the difference between when the GC WPS and the WPS what's the difference So uh, not all access points are vulnerable to the Pixie Dust attack. And uh, you can download a list of them, and there's quite a few. There's Linksys, Mac here, you know, but it's not all of their devices, it's just some of them. Um, up here we have Vulcan and Linksys that are both picking us uh, vulnerable. It was just a specific implementation that they did of the WPS, and uh, it was, yeah, so it's not easy to, to find out. So you just try it, and with Pixie Dust, the nice thing is, 
practically quit with them. And uh, sometimes you'll even come back and say, I, I can't do it. So, um, so that's really the difference is just the way the implementation is designed. And uh, it's just that dash capital K, and then now there's a change in the potential picking up for sure not. Good question. Any else? Awesome guys, thank you so much.